what's the craziest thing you found? Gold, gold and cash. Cartier watches, all kinds of stuff, diamonds, everything. There's nothing you can't find in New York City. So the way this industry works is people who have nothing go and they pick up the cans and bottles. Then we call a truck. So this truck goes and the driver gets one penny that he collects per bottle. Then the company that picks up the bottles from him gets eight and a half cents. How much do you make? Anywhere from four to $800 a week. You know, it sounds foolish, but what I do is I take the pot and pan on a Saturday and Sunday. I'll, go, I'll be in uh, Jackson Heights and I'll go sell it for five, seven dollars. So I make another thousand dollars every weekend from the stuff I find during the week. <laughs> I have to laugh because I've been doing it for so long. I've been living off of it. So in a week you have a couple grand maybe? 14, 15, 18, depends on the week. It depends on the weather. Because if I could be out in a summer day every day, I would sell all day every day. I make 3000 a week. Easy, easy. You grew up in New York? I grew up in New York, grew up in Queens. Met my wife down here, had three beautiful babies with her. Came up, involved in some not too good business. And I uh, got in trouble, got locked up, lost my wife and kids. So that's why I'm in this mess picking up It must up have cans. been very illegal. Was it like the FBI or something that got involved? The FBI got me. Uh, I was smuggling. Just, just, and people. Oh, and people. Yeah, okay. That's the real money. Millions and millions of dollars. We used to drive boats to the Bahamas, the Bimini, different islands, and bring them over to the United States. How'd you get caught? I got ratted on, somebody told on me. So they got off of probation and I got 10 years. Do you regret anything? Oh yeah, I regret everything. Lost my wife and kids. I didn't get to see any of the grandchildren be born. I missed a lot of stuff, man. You seem to be able to hold that pain together pretty well though, you don't? What am I gonna do? I got no more tears. I'm all cried out. Now all I do is I can only be joyful and laugh and have a good life because it's soon gonna, it's soon gonna end. I'm 60. What were you like in the past? A little crazy, a little reckless. I used to have big muscles and great hair and girls thought I was cute. So I took advantage of all of that. And, and uh, it's not the right way to be. So now I'm a Christian. I do the right thing. I do my very best to walk properly, to love the others, you know? Milton, I didn't expect to see you here. Yeah, right. Tell me about your relationship with God. Woo! So there's a great scripture in the word of God from Ephesians chapter one, verse four. It says, for God has chosen you before the foundation of the world. What that means to me is before Genesis 1-1, he had already chosen those who he chose. I was called in June of 1993. I gave my life to the Lord. I was in jail. The three ladies came from the Bronx to preach. I just felt led in my spirit to say, okay, I, I, I think you're telling the truth. I agree, I'll accept. Since 1993, which is 30 years ago, I've screwed up a million times. I've been used of God a million times, but I've screwed up a million times. And I've come to the conclusion after 30 years that truly, truly God knew who I was and what I was gonna do and what I was gonna become. And I, he knew I would pick up cans one day before it ever happened. That scripture helps me to realize that when I fail, you know, don't please or do the things of God. He still loves me, he still cares for me because he chose me in Christ. He seated me at his right hand in heavenly places. I'm seated there right now, whether I deserve it or not. Is that hope you have for the future, something you hold on to now? It's difficult, but I've seen so many miracles and so many spiritual things that I firmly with all my heart believe that God is real. And therefore, I believe his promises in the word and I stand on them. I don't deserve it, but thank God for his grace, you know? Hola, Amanda. That's my friend Amanda. Eric, Hi. it didn't come out yet, love. <laughs> Count your stuff, Milton's coming back in 15 minutes. John, here's a question for you. Talk to me. When you get to heaven, what are you gonna ask God? I, why'd you choose me? <laughs> like, who am I? That you, cho <laughs> you chose me. <laughs> so I can walk on the streets made of gold. You got a house with me up there? Look at those streams and rivers and angels. Oh, it's good to go. I'd be so, I couldn't stop smiling down here. Oh, I'm gonna stop smiling up there. <laughs> what do you think he would say of you? You could have did so much better. I had so much more for you, you big dummy. <laughs> What do you have to say to someone who's trying to believe in God but can't? Simplest answer ever. I heard it from a young boy. God, 15 seconds of your time. Bow down and say, Lord, if you're real, make yourself real to me. Speak to me. I could keep you here all day, Eric, with stories. My God has been great to me. And I appreciate you coming around to encourage me and invigorate me again about my 
Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. <laughs> How are we doing, ladies? How's life? Great. 